Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I had a request in a couple of uh, YouTube comments to test this product from Japanese company Fruitech uh, called the NCF Clearline uh, AC optimizer, they call it. Uh, it's a little thing you plug into um, your AC outlet and it's supposed to imp uh, improve the fidelity of your equipment. Uh, you can see it here. It looks very close to this PS Audio noise harvester. So I assume it was the same kind of idea in that it had a filter in there and uh, would, would attempt to reduce the noise on AC line. As you'll see in a second, it's not what it is. But anyway, um, it was cheap enough for me to buy it, and it was about $236 from Amazon US. Uh, so when I said cheap, I mean cheap for me to buy it. And as far as these tweaks go, obviously people spend thousands and thousands of dollars on these kinds of products. So to them, it's, it's a bargain. Um, when you try to read the website, it is very hard to figure out what this thing is and what it does. There's so much mumbo jumbo terminology used in there. Alpha OCC air coil in the NCF clear line. I mean, it just goes on and on with that terminology. But prior to testing it, I was doing this research and, and I watched a video in there and I was surprised when they made this uh, stark comment. And he says it's passive, which doesn't mean anything, but he says the line and a neutral, which are the two conductors that uh, carry in uh, power in your AC, the other one's safety ground, it claims that they're not connected uh, in any shape to each other and don't form a circuit either meaning there's nothing from one pin to the other. And if there's nothing electrically from one pin to the other, then there can't be a filter in there, electrical filter. Electrical filter needs to have a return path. So it always has two pins. If you take a light and hook it up to one terminal in your battery, it, nothing comes on. You gotta complete the circuit. So I realized, well, this is not what I expected it to be. It's, it's not like a noise harvest there. And so I watched a short YouTube video they have. This stuff's not on their website, unfortunately. And I grabbed two of the frames in here. So, and they show the insides of it. And basically what it has is that there's these coils in here in that it's a piece of wire that's been coiled, but it only connects to one pin on your AC terminal. The other side, as you can see, is an insulator and then it doesn't go to the other side. And same with the other one. So you basically have a wound coil with one end of it connected with the other end either not connected or is connected to the uh, uh, nylon plastic uh, enclosure. In either case, there is no electrical connection anywhere. So what a coil or inductor would do in this case is basically nothing. Uh, it's not an electrical device. It may be some mechanical device and vibrate in there, but it can't possibly perform any electrical functionality. And I'll measure and confirm that uh, on this thing. And they talk about how this little piece of wire wrapped around eliminates resonances coming from power outlets. Uh, what resonances to begin with is unclear. What is resonating and uh, how this little t curled up piece of wire will change that, uh, you know, that characteristics, whatever it is. And you can see a little bit better image of it here in another uh, frame that I grabbed in here. Again, you can see these things in here. The center pin goes directly to the connected to the uh, terminal here. But the other, there is no, I mean, there's no other side to it. So very, very puzzling uh, on this thing. Um, they uh, show a couple of reviews samples in there. Of course, as, as is typical with these devices, there are a whole bunch of people gushing over it. And the first one from a Japanese person, uh, Fukuda-san, um, says that it removes high-frequency noise. Well, we can measure high-frequency noise, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the second reviewer says the same thing. It says incredible improvement in signal noise ratio. Well, signal noise ratio is SNR and I show it in every review I do. So very objective stuff. Of course, the company uh, doesn't show any of that uh, measurement whatsoever, but we can remedy that. The biggest issue is, is what I see is just becoming so common in these power products. They have no regulatory certification whatsoever. This is something that's going to plug into the wall I want to know it's safe. I mean, if it's going to be left in there all the time, does it generate heat? Is there some conductivity in this nylon that they have that maybe if I touch it, I, I may get a shock? 
Um, I didn't find any problems like that, but you know, we need a proper regulatory certification for these things. Let's say a surge comes in and a few thousand volts get conducted across these two terminals. Uh, is this going to catch on fire? Is it going to melt? Is it going to smoke? Is it going to do something bad? Um, in U.S., you know, you got to have this kind of thing UL certified uh, by underwriter laboratories. Uh, there is CE certification for uh, Europe, uh, CSA, ETL. No marking on their website. No marking in the uh, packaging that I have. It came with a little manual. There's nothing. I can't find a single reference to any safety check. Now, if this thing was being sold for $5, it would be one thing, but a but, uh, Japanese company uh, uh, not uh, getting a certification or something they charge $230 for, just sell 10 of these and would probably pay for a quick UL testing because uh, there's not much to this thing, so I don't imagine the testing would be very expensive on this thing. So uh, even if it did everything it said it did, this is just... You know, really shameful and, and shouldn't be the case. Uh, as I said, it's getting very common, or it's always been common, I don't know. But every time I grab one of these things, there's no safety certification. So on that basis alone, I would say don't buy, buy this product. But let's keep going. Now, the, my typical stance with uh, any power products is to first measure my AC power and see what noise and distortion it has, and then plug this device into the AC and see if the AC is improved. Uh, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Now, measuring it is a little bit more complicated than that. You're talking about high voltage mains, and you can't just take that and stick it into the audio analyzer. It'll blow up the audio analyzer. So I use a special uh, uh, probe, it's differential probe, um, that uh, divides the input by 100. So uh, 122 volts becomes 1.2 volts. And then the analyzer doesn't mind that. And 1.2 volts is typical audio signal, so I can get the full resolution of audio precision analyzer I have applied to AC analysis. So as you can see on the right side, I can see every nuance of that AC waveform, all the noise in it, all these dirty spikes in there and all that is all in there. And if you look on here, this thing, instead of being a very pretty sine wave, the tops of it are a little messed up. There's also a little glitch in here, something right around that part of the uh, AC waveform is kicking in and pulling some power and causing that little glitch in there. So it'll be a good test case to see if this product filters or removes anything in there. Uh, we see that it's essentially 60 hertz, which is what we want. And if we treat this as an audio signal, the ratio of the good part of this power, which is uh, um, the, what we want, it's, just, it's AC power, pure 60 hertz in here, to all the junk that it has, is about 31 dB difference between those two. And then, so I went ahead and then without changing anything, it's pretty easy because everything is running. I just plug this in, take another snapshot of the analyzer output, and we see that the sine ad remains the same. Uh, the voltage is basically the same. These, are, you know, these digits vary even if I don't change anything. So 0 0.1, you know, dB doesn't mean anything. But it was it's 31 now, and it was with 31 before. We had this junk spikes over here. These are all unwanted, and they're all unwanted here. And no difference, and even that little glitch happily survived and came right out of the AC. So at this point, we know that this device is not a filter of any sort, despite the company's claims. There's just nothing has been filtered. Uh, and we're going, this time I'm measuring all the way up to one megahertz. So about uh, 25 times higher than uh, audio audible bandwidth. And uh, it's usually very easy to filter these, this part of the spectrum. Uh, many products do that, but of course they're outside of audible band and don't matter. And at any rate, your audio equipment already filters these things. So very disappointing that the product does absolutely nothing. And of course, electrically, we would know it does nothing, as I explained. You know, just connecting a few turns of wire into to the each uh, excuse me to the each. Uh, Pin of your AC, of course, going to have no electrical effect. Um, before testing it, actually, I did hook up a multimeter to this and uh, very sensitive multimeter, uh, special one design LCR meter. And I measured that there is indeed no connection from the safety ground to either pin or between the pins. So there's no res the resistance is basically too high for me to measure. They're completely insulated from each other. I measured it as an inductor. It did not measure any inductance 
distance at all. Uh, it did measure a little bit of capacitance, two picofarads. Uh, two picofarads, uh, two puffs as we call it, is nothing. I mean, I could just breathe on the probe and I get two picofarads. So basically, these three pins are electrically completely isolated from each other. So therefore, nothing can be shunted and nothing can be taken from one pin and dumped onto the ground and what have you. And the measurements prove that. And that's why this waveform, all of this distortion and noise remains completely intact. intact. And then if we look at it in more detail, basically that FFT that I showed you, I can just plot it by itself. And uh, you can see again our, our uh, um, mains, which is what we want, the wanted signal, all the way up to 1.2 megahertz here. I've got one of them in red, which is the IAC, and the other one is with the uh, NCF clear line plugged in. And you can see these two land on top of each other. All the noise is the same, all the junk is the same. Everything's the same. So it basically does nothing. At this point, we could just stop and say, well, if the AC signals never change, of course, anything you plug into it is going to work the same way. But, you know, let's, let's you know, humor the claims of the company. Uh, so I set up my audio precision analyzer to basically test itself. And I told it to output four volts and measure four volts. And I got a signal noise ratio of uh, almost 134 dB. Um, this is about 25 dB better than threshold of hearing. Um, and, you know, that's what I expect from a high performance audio analyzer. And this is with raw AC. I then plugged in the clear line into it. And naturally, it made absolutely no difference. If, you know, you have to go two digits past the decimal point before you even see that. And again, that's just run-to-run -run variation. So no difference whatsoever in the performance of the audio analyzer. And then we can look at the spectrum of the noise. Now, of course, it's much, much cleaner. We see that the worst case noise is minus 125, minus 130 dB. This is our you know, main tone, and this is all the extra distortion, if you will, all hugely below audible band. And, uh, and the key is whether I plug in the clear line or don't plug it in, you know, performance remains identical, and you know, there's just nothing there. Now, people at this point always say, well, I don't watch these graphs, I don't understand the graphs, but you know, what does it sound like? Well, I like devices like this because they're quick to test. I can be playing music, I can plug it in, and I can unplug it, and nothing gets interrupted. If I was testing a you know, power condition, and I have to disconnect the power, replug it in, restart everything, and by then your memory of what something sounded you know, is long gone. But with this, music plays, and I can just plug and unplug it and listen carefully. So for this testing, I use my RME DAC, um, which is a $1,000 high-performance DAC. It's my everyday DAC that I have on my desk. And these are my Dan Clark Stealth headphones. They're world's lowest distortion headphone that I've ever measured. And they're sealed, uh, and that means it isolates the noise. My room's pretty quiet anyway, but with this being closed in, it blocks all the noise. It's a $4,000 headphone, so I hope somebody doesn't say, hey, your device is not, uh, uh, your headphone wasn't uh, high enough resolution. It's higher resolution than anything other people might have. And so I then queued up some of my high performance, high performance reference tracks that I have with extremely good resolution and, and uh, channel separation and, and imaging and what have you. And I listened and uh, I would plug this thing in and unplug it, plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug it. It absolutely makes no difference. And it shouldn't because that's what the measurements say. It didn't do anything to the AC signal, so therefore the rest of the audio product not going to change, uh, change either. Uh, there was some talk about resonance. I assume they mean mechanical resonance. So maybe you have a speaker system, do something for those kind of resonances. So I actually banged on my power strip that powers all my audio equipment. I could not hear anything, any contributions without this. Even then I plugged this in and I banged on it a few times, you know, hit it and everything. And there was nothing coming through the headphones that I was listening to. So there's just... There's just nothing there. It can't be anything there. Whoever thought of this circuit and this, this design clearly has no real understanding of electricity and electronics where they confuse a you know, piece of wire just dangling in the air as having some electrical function. Uh, I, didn't, I, th I don't think I showed you the Amazon uh, website where I bought it. Uh, look at this, what it says. It says exceptional noise removal effect. I mean, it, 
if it's exceptional, if it means it's so much, the effect is so large, I should be able to instantly tell that it's there. And, and of course there is. So this and combined with the fact that it has no regulatory certification just means you're basically throwing away $230 and, and tying up an outlet and, uh, uh, it just does nothing. So if I'd known what it did, I probably wouldn't have even bought it. I would have just said, look, it does nothing. You know, it can't do anything. There's no circuit there. But they're wrapped all that stuff in so much mumbo jumbo on their website that uh, it's hard to find out the little key information which has no circuit in there. There's basically nothing there. Uh, so maybe you could stick a toothpick in the, in the outlet. It might do better than what this thing does because it's not an electrical circuit. All right, so who, hopefully whoever asked me to buy this is happy about it. Um, um, normally when I buy products and I test them, I keep them. And unfortunately I test a lot of bad products. So I have like rooms and rooms full of uh, bad products that I get stuck with since nobody wants to take them from me after I review them, say they don't do anything good. But in this case, I'm actually going to return this. I think this, the claims of the company that is that reduces noise, it made me think it's a real electrical filter. And the fact that it's not, I feel like even I was misled. But as much as I know, I thought this thing was a real AC filter. And therefore, it has some value, and it doesn't. So I'm actually going to return this to Amazon, to the Japanese seller, who I feel bad for. It shipped it all the way from Japan to me. But uh, I just think the message needs to get through them and through the parent, you know, through tech that, hey, you know, there are people who properly analyze these things. And even with my ears or with equipment, I can't find this thing to do anything. It's just chunk of plastic or nylon, whatever it's made out of, with absolutely no useful function. Okay, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. See you in a future one. Bye-bye.